So I've been tracking pretty much every minute of the development that I've done for my current project using Python. And it's pretty easy to set up. I'm gonna show you, or at least point you towards the resources that you need to set it up for yourself if you wanna do something similar. And I wanna spend some time talking about the mindset behind creating tools like this and how they can help you beyond just making things more efficient, right? Because this isn't providing a lot to me in terms of necessity. I don't need this information, but it's gonna help me in a lot of ways. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So just to show you the tool, I designed it in Python just so that I would be able to use something from the terminal to very quickly let me track my time. So what it looks like, I just essentially type in, let me make this a little bit bigger, I guess. Can I make this larger? Okay, so I'm gonna execute this program. It's called time.py. And if I, let's say I was sitting down, I'm gonna start working on the game and I'm gonna work on the art for a little while. I type in start art. And then whenever I get done, I can wait a little while, I can, you know, whatever, how long, however long I wait. You can see the record's already in the table from, from previous sessions. I do the same thing except I say stop and then it creates a new record in that table. It's at zero minutes because I didn't even make it to a minute. Uh, let's say that I had made a mistake and I stopped it early and I wanna add some time to it. I can say add, uh, we'll say 200 just for fun, 204. Then it edits that existing record without appending anything else or inserting anything else. Oh, I made another mistake and I need to remove that record or subtract from that record uh, 20 minutes it'll do that and then along that same vein I can remove the record completely the previous record and finally instead of editing a record or creating one from scratch or instead of you know starting and stopping I can say create art 2000 and I think that that should yeah so it just inserts a record has the data when it was inserted in the time to show the code just briefly uh, just so you kind of get exposed to that. Keep in mind it's kind of hacky. I put this together very quickly because once again, it's not worth spending a lot of time on. Pre-optimization is the root of all evil. Uh, the whole idea is you know, you're just grabbing the commands from the system arguments and depending on what the commands are, you're calling these different functions. It's always authorizing with this uh, Pi G Sheets service or Pi G Sheets module or whatever you want to call it, uh, opening the spreadsheet and then doing whatever it's supposed to do. So like this is deleting that row and I, it's just kind of hard coded because I know that it will be on row 13. Uh, this is the one where it's updating the value, you're editing. This is the one where it's inserting a row. Um, we're using this pickle file to save the start time uh, so that on the next execution, you'll be able to load that start time and then you know find out the difference in the start time and the final time and write that to the file. If you want to make something like this yourself, I'll point you toward this uh, documentation for Pi G Sheets, which is what I use to set all of this up. It has all the information you'll need as far as how to edit the page and everything. For the authentication, which can be kind of tricky, I just followed uh, the deeper documentation under creating a service account, uh, where you're working with kind of the Google, uh, the Google services. You know, they essentially have APIs for their uh, Google Sheets. So you use those. Pi G Sheets is just kind of a wrapper for all of that. So yeah, when you have the service account, it should be pretty pretty straightforward. If you have any if you try to set something like this up, you can post some questions in the comments and I can try to help. I don't have a ton of experience doing this and at this point it's honestly been a little while since I set it up, so I don't remember everything completely. But the whole point behind this really is just to have something very easy to use, something very intuitive that doesn't take a lot of time to track as much as I can about the development of my game so that I will have things that I can use to market the game. With this, I picture this being an interesting discussion uh, on like, for example, any Python communities. And I can take this, I can bundle it up, I can uh, make it public for them, and I can say, oh look, I use Python to track my time uh, developing my game. And even if they're not interested in game development, they are interested in Python and the uses of Python, and now I have a connection to a new audience with which to market my game. You know, The same thing can be said for data analytics people, people that love seeing just data of any kind. I can take this data, they may not be interested in what the data is per se, but uh, even all you have to do is find that simple connection, You know, some aspect that will tie you to their community, and you have a new audience. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm thinking about, is just, 
I want to use everything from the development of my game uh, to eventually be useful in the marketing of the game. So yeah, I don't really have anything else to talk about with this. Hopefully it's interesting, and hopefully you're thinking about when you're making games, try to find ways to optimize whatever it is that you think is important. So if you think tracking your time in your game is important, try to find a way to avoid doing that manually in, in as much of a way as you can. Because there's still a manual aspect to this because I have to pull up the terminal and type in the command, but it's much different than me tracking the time myself uh, with a watch or you know a stopwatch or something and putting it into this Google Sheets. And obviously, I'm well aware that there are time tracking alternatives, uh, but really the mindset behind this isn't always to find a tool, but get used to making some of those tools yourself. Uh, not every tool, which is a little bit of a contradiction. You know, you kind of have to decide for yourself what's worth uh, finding versus building. For me, I knew that I could spend less than an hour, come up with a little Python script that would push to Google Sheets. It's exactly what I need. I don't need anything else, so it's perfect. 41 minutes, actually, because that's, I think, I marked down this time as marketing, working on this tool, and I'm done. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I have exactly what I need. So thank you for watching the video. If you want to support the channel, I've been trying to make updates to my Patreon page. So I've changed the rewards a little bit. Uh, there's a single tier of $5. And the goal behind it is that you will get early demos of the games that I'm working on. And I still yet to really reveal the main game that I'm working on right now, but that's coming up. But if you want access to those games pretty early, uh, you can become a part of the Patreon. And then I'll also... I'm planning to start uploading some exclusive videos, mostly of me just playing games and talking about game design from a game developer's perspective, I guess, while I play these these larger games. And I think that would just be a lot of fun. Um, so I'm throwing that in there as kind of this exclusive thing. I don't know if people are going to find that interesting, but you never know. So check out the Patreon if you want to support the channel. And I appreciate you watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one.